Welcome back to Bloomberg Technology. I'm Emily Chang in San Francisco. When it comes to the digital revolution, Latin America is catching up fast. The venture capital firm Atlantico, which backs pre-scale Latin American companies, just published a report showing how the digital economy in that part of the world has skyrocketed as a result of the pandemic. Let's dive deeper into all of this with Atlantico venture partner Hugo Barra. He was also vice president of product for Android at Google, uh, worked at Xiaomi, at Facebook as well. Uh, Hugo, you've worn so many hats, um, so your perspective is really valuable. What are some key highlights uh, that you learned from this report about the Latin American digital economy? I'm curious what surprised you. Hi, Emily. Uh, nice to see you. There's uh, definitely a lot to unpack. Um, in this um, report that we just published yesterday, uh, probably the, the, the key story, the big headline um, which sort of underlines um, investing is that the the the, the pandemic tech boom um, has been sticky in Latin America, and this is a huge deal because in the U.S. we saw uh, a bit of a reversal of the historical trend, um, you know, or back to the historical trend in in tech, uh, whereas in Latin America, and particularly in Brazil, we we seem to have sort of jumped ahead. Uh, Brazil e-commerce, for instance is three years sort of ahead of the plan. Uh, you know, that, that sort of growth curve has shi shifted up three years. Um, and, and that obviously has driven a tremendous amount of activity and acceleration in tech there. And there are some, some pretty uh, interesting and borderline absurd um, stats uh, that I think are worth talking about. So one of them, this is sort of part of the e-commerce e uh, branch, if you will, is, is grocery delivery. So groceries delivery in, um, in Brazil uh, as sort of measured by iFood, which is the largest player locally, saw a six times jump, like right at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and then since that, it's grown an extra 10 times, right? So 60 times uh, jump um, between the beginning of the pandemic and now, and that's basically a sustained sort of new level. Um, another big one is telemedicine, which is obviously pretty uh, understandable. But, um, but virtual appointments uh, in Brazil as measured by one of the leading players, a company called Conexa Saúde, uh, 10x in the first year of the pandemic and then doubled uh, hmm. since that, right? So it's like a 20x uh, jump um, from, from the beginning of times. And, and these are sustained new levels, which is really exciting. Interesting. Uh, you know, I'm curious how this is influencing where you and Atlantico are placing your bets because you're learning about these new trends. At the same time, we're going into a massive macroeconomic downturn, and I wonder um, how that's uniquely impacting Latin America. Yeah. So um, I, I think a few things are, are shifting, and I, I would probably look at the, the venture investing scene um, specifically. So. Uh, you know, without a doubt, investment has gone down as compared to what happened in 2021 uh, in, in 2020 um, as a result of sort of this new economic reality. Um, so uh, investment slowed down in Latin America. In, in particular, we've noticed that foreign investors, um, they, they remained active in the region, but they're pulling back a little. But what's happened is that the local funds are sort of making up the difference, right? And, and this is directly in response uh, to this sort of uh, lasting tech boom um, post-pandemic. It's sort of the, the excitement remains, if you will. So valuations have gone down, um, but investment, particularly in earlier stage companies, uh, you know, continues. There's a few other unique things happening that I think are going to continue to fuel investment in a big way. You know, fintech in LATAM is extremely well developed, uh, I would argue, in some ways much more than in North America. Uh, there's a couple of examples worth mentioning. You know, first off, uh, we saw uh, you know one of the most uh, successful fintech companies, uh, the largest neo bank in the world, New Bank, go public recently. Uh, that's you know a, a world class story. And there's another stat that I uh, I think also relates to to the investment climate, which is what's happening with mobile payments uh, in in Brazil, uh, and and it's it's a it's a skyrocketing example. So the the central bank launched, launched these sort of new instant payment rails a couple of years ago. It's called PIX. Uh, and PIX is in some ways very similar to UPI in India, which everybody talks about. But, but what happened in Brazil that was interesting and different is PIX got to a billion transactions per month 
in just under a year, mm -hmm. which was a quarter of the time it took UPI to get to that same billion a month, you know, transaction level in China, in, uh, forgive me, in India. And India has six times the population of Brazil, right? So that changes consumer uh, habits. It, it makes it a lot easier for e-commerce and, you know, and offline to online, online to offline um, sort of uh, patterns to play out. So that has affected the rate at which uh, uh, the, the fintech sector is growing and it also affects investing in fintech specifically.